Most model kit builders probably won't recognize this logo, although aviation historians will. This is the company that released only three plastic kits, but some 90 types of real aircraft, more than 50 of which were put into serial production, with over 15,000 airframes being built. This is Tupolev. Tupolev ANTK, the former OKB-156, has its main facilities located in Moscow, but during the Soviet era, the company also had a branch in the township of Voronezh, and I hope I'm saying that correctly, in southern Russia. It was there in Voronezh, in the beginning of the 1990s, that a couple of engineers who were dedicated model builders went to the branch office executives with a proposal to produce plastic kits of Tupolev designs. They argued that manufacturing scale models is a great way to commemorate Tupolev's achievements, to form the positive public image of the company, and to attract young people into aviation, and so on and so on and so forth. We all know how these kinds of papers read. Basically, there were a couple of kit model builders who really wanted to see models of the aircraft they helped design and build put into production. That being said, the argument worked. Some of the more illustrious executives reacted positively to this, and the work was begun. The collapse of the Soviet Union and the economic disorder that followed slowed things down a little bit, but in the summer of 1996, the first kit was released. This was a 1 to 200 scale Tupolev 2154B2 that was made from the real aircraft blueprints and became the only accurate plastic kit of the Tupolev 154 on the market at that time. The Plasticart 1 to 100 scale kit, although beautiful and beloved by Eastern European model builders, was far from perfect in terms of accuracy. The Tu 154 model had no undercarriage and was to be mounted on a display stand. The parts fit was reasonably good. The first Tupolev kit was rather simple, and this is no surprise because the toolmaker in Voronezh had little experience with plastic models. And it could be added that while Aurora and Lindbergh were gaining their first experience in plastic models, Tupolev was too busy developing real aircraft, like the Product 105, which soon became known to the world as the Tupolev 222. Say that three times fast. The second kit followed about a year later in the summer of 1997. This was a 172nd scale ANT-25. The world record-setting aircraft designed in 1933 by the Tupolev company by the young aircraft designer Pavel Sukhoi, who would later head his own OKB, or Design Bureau. The Red Wing Ant-25 with the Stalin's route inscription on the fuselage depicted the record aircraft that made a non-stop flight from Europe to the United States of America across the North Pole. On June 18, 1937, the crew of Chakalov, Belyakov, and Badyukov took off from a small airfield near Moscow and some 44 hours later made a landing at Pearson Airfield near Vancouver, Washington. The Soviet pilots were received by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the Oval Office, and Valery Chekhalov, the crew commander, was awarded by the Soviet government with his personal U-2 light aircraft that is currently on display in his hometown. On July 12, 1937, another Ant-25, flown by Gromov, Yumashev, and Danilin, took off from the same airfield nearby Moscow and some 55 hours later landed in San Jacinto, California, having made a record flight of 11,500 kilometers or 7,186 miles. In fact, you can click down below for a link to a documentary about these flights. It's worth a look. Some five years before Tupolev's ANT-25 kit model release, Back in 1992, another Russian company called ICAR, which means Icarus, also released a 172nd scale kit of the Ant-25. And this causes a lot of confusion. Scalemates says that the Tupolev Ant-25 is a reboxing of the ICAR release, but this is not correct. These are two different kits that have nothing in common. They have a different parts breakdown, runner's arrangement, etc. The ICAR kit initially was molded in colored plastic with red wings and a blue fuselage. 
Later, they produced the entire thing in white styrene. Unfortunately, by the mid-1990s, the ICAR kit was discontinued, and this was the reason for Tupolev to make their own version. A 1 to 144 scale Tupolev 334 became the third and final Tupolev kit that was released in 1998. The aircraft had not made its maiden flight yet, so the box art showed the TU-334 in the planned livery. And on the bottom of the box, there was a photograph of the two prototypes under construction. Luckily, the aircraft was painted for its maiden flight exactly as planned, so the decal is correct. In the beginning of the 2000s, the company officials lost interest in kit production. All three molds were sold to Eastern Express, and the kits became available in Eastern Express boxes. Eastern Express still sells the TU-154B2 kit, and it also has the TU-154. Unfortunately, Scalemates mentions Eastern Express's TU-154 kit as a new tooling, when in fact, it's a reboxing of the original Tupolev kit. Well, that's about all I have for the Tupolev kits that are made by Tupolev, the real aircraft company, and to my knowledge, this is the only time that an actual aircraft manufacturer delved even briefly into the kit model business. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Well, I'm Max of Max's Models. You guys have a great day. We'll see you next time. Еще один есть поворот в судьбе твоей И жизнь покажет путь, ты только не робей Пройди проверку и не спрашивай зачем Ведь этот опыт будет в жизни всех важней Это так непредсказуемо, но будет все окей Ведь это твоя жизнь, беги по ней Запечатли все кадры в голове Когда ты был здоров и был на веселье Тату останутся до конца всех твоих дней И то, что было, ты об этом не жалей Это так непредсказуемо, но будет все окей Ведь это твоя жизнь, беги по ней Ведь это твоя жизнь